Greetings, and welcome to another episode of the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast series. Podcast episodes are available on www.vhha.com and on popular podcast hosting sites and apps, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, and many others. Episodes of the podcast also air each Saturday at noon and Sunday at 10 a.m. on 100.5 FM, 92.7 FM, and 8.20 a.m. across Central Virginia. Send any questions, comments, or feedback to pcfpodcast at vhha.com. That's pcfpodcast at vhha.com. Today, we're excited to be joined by UVA emergency room resident, Dr. Robbie Russell, who has transitioned to clinical work following a professional soccer career. We'll discuss his past on the pitch, his journey to medicine, and his experiences during COVID-19. But first, thanks for joining us today, Dr. Russell. Thank you so much for having me. For the benefit of our listeners, Dr. Russell, a native of Ghana, spent eight years in Europe playing soccer or football, as the rest of the world knows it, (laughs) then spent part of eight seasons in U.S.-based Major League Soccer playing for D.C. United and Real Salt Lake. So to start, tell us about the highlights of your athletic career. Well, uh, I was really fortunate to have a career that took me all over the world. One of the big highlights when I was in Europe is winning a championship in Norway, also kind of being a part of a UEFA Champions League team and playing in kind of the group stages of UEFA Champions League. And then one of, you know, the big highlights of my American kind of um, jaunt and and playing with Real Salt Lake was when we won the championship and I uh, got to score a winning penalty kick for the MLS, you know, cup final, which was, was really cool. Yeah, that sounds, I mean, I used to play like rec soccer, so I know how cool it was <laughs> when I scored a goal. So I can't yeah. imagine how cool it is when you're playing in like a real game. <laughs> um, no, it was, a, it was definitely a, a memorable moment. Yeah, for sure. And all that time you were playing, was a career in medicine always part of the long-term plan? It wasn't. Actually, when I had first gone to undergrad, um, I went to Duke initially, and I had started off as a pre-med. I was like an athlete on a, you know, athletic scholarship, and I walked out of my first calculus course, and I bombed it. And so I kind of chalked it up like, well, there's the end of that career, you know. <laughs> and so kind of, you know, went forward, got my degree, graduated, went over to play, thinking I was going to play a couple of years, then maybe kind of go into business or something, which is what a lot of the other athletes were doing. And, you know, one year turned into three years, turned into five years. And so eventually the career kind of took off, which was great. But then about halfway through my career, I ended up getting some really bad injuries. Well, actually specifically just one injury. And, and there was a real question mark as to whether or not I'd be able to play after that. And so at this point, I had met my wife and her family and her father was actually an emergency medicine doc. And so my father-in-law was the first one that kind of sat me down. And, you know, when I was kind of thinking of what to do next, he was like, you know, what's your real job going to be? I mean, like that father-in-law way that they do. And, you know, I kind of jokingly said, well, I'd originally thought of medicine. What do you think about that? And, you know, I thought he was going to like laugh, laugh at me and say like, you know, you've been out of school for, at this point, it was like six, seven years. Making that transition back would be impossible. And he didn't. He looked at me and said, okay, what do we need to do? And so at that point, I was like, well, let me really figure out if I want to go into medicine then. So I started doing kind of scribing and kind of shadowing with a lot of the team orthopedic surgeons that we worked with, specifically at Salt Lake and at DC United. And to that, I I kind of fell in love with medicine. And and then it was just trying to find what specialty would fit me the best. So that brings me to today, where now I'm an emergency medicine second year resident here at UVA. Love that family support, I got to say, because when I told my family I was majoring in English, they were all pretty hesitant. So so as you mentioned, you your family kind of settled in Massachusetts, you went to Duke and you played on the Blue Devils men's varsity team. And as you know, Duke and UVA are both ACC schools with rich athletic traditions. Fully aware. (laughs) So I have to ask, and I'm not trying to get you in any trouble here, but now that you are at UVA, do your college sports rooting interests lie with the Cavaliers or your alma mater in Durham? It's always fun to watch good soccer, and I think right now UVA is an excellent team, and it's fun to watch them play. And, you know, you always have strong ties to your your alma mater, and now that I kind of consider UVA an additional alma mater, it's definitely become a dilemma. (laughs) Um, And so I really, really get excited for whoever wins. Okay. Yeah, I respect that. Um, <laughs> my my politically correct <laughs> right, way of, right. Um, <laughs> dodging the question. <laughs> so, Dr. Russell, your work as a resident has coincided with the COVID-19 global pandemic. And I'm curious what that experience has been like for you as an emergency room physician and as a father and family man. It's been difficult. I'm not going to lie. You know, residency is one of the toughest parts of medical training. And coming into it, you expect it to be difficult. But to complete residency during a pandemic 
with a wife and now three kids. I actually just had a, a child like two months ago. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. It's been some challenges that we did not expect. Like you said originally, family support has kind of been the key to this whole process. And without it, it wouldn't have happened. And so it's continuing now. My wife and my kids, they live up in Northern Virginia. And, you know, I have an apartment down here and we kind of commute back and forth both ways to try and spend as much time together as we can. Of course, we also have the grandparents at home visiting and actually, I should say, helping out with the kids kids now and they're all high risk and so we have to kind of take that into account as to how much we really see each other and so I remember at the end of the the year last year I had gone like through a stretch of like two months without seeing my family and that was really hard I've never been away from them for that long and, and that was very difficult but I didn't want to make any kind of rash decisions that might put them in jeopardy given my work and so now this year you know it's actually almost been kind of a I guess a positive spin is that now with, you know, COVID kind of making schools more online, the kids are now much more mobile and can kind of come down more. So I'm actually hoping to kind of maybe see them more often this year, but I also kind of we're juggling that, keeping them safe and not exposing them unnecessarily, as well as the grandparents who are now living with us. Sure. Well, I really appreciate that answer. I can't imagine. I don't have any children, so I can't imagine how difficult it is to, to not be able to see them for long stretches of time. Well, I mean, I, I think in this, COVID has stretched everybody. I think it everyone has their own kind of issue, their own thing that the pandemic has made worse. It's by no means an isolated story. You know, I think everyone has struggled through this this, this time. For sure. So I just have a few more questions for you. And these questions are kind of just to give listeners a bit of a sense of who you are beyond the work you do. So first is, what is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Oh, this is the best piece of advice you've ever been given. I think it's honestly from my father-in-law. It was essentially, to sum it all up, was you're never too old to try something new. You know, I, I definitely wouldn't have gone on this journey, would not have become a doctor had I not heard that piece of advice. And so I, I will fully say it to anyone else out there. It is never too old to learn something new. And I'd like to say that I'm somewhat proof of that, but um, I hope it, it continues for me. And I hope other people can latch onto that as well. Sure. And the next question is, and this is an entirely imaginary premise, but in the hypothetical scenario that you could anticipate your final day on Earth, what would your last meal be? Oof. Um, that's tough. Uh, so one of my children ended up being born with like kind of severe allergies. Mm -hmm. And one of those allergies is seafood. And so for the duration of his life, we have done our best to kind of avoid any exposure to seafood. And seafood was one of my favorite foods <laughs> prior to this. So I think I would probably go with like a seafood deal at the end, probably like a lobster ravioli. Oh, that um, sounds and then good. on the side and then maybe like an additional side of like a deviled crab or something. It just as much seafood as I could get. <laughs> yeah, no, that sounds great. Um yeah. love that answer. What is the top item on your bucket list? Mm, top item on my bucket list. I think I think I want to take my kids to at least see every continent. So nice. Yeah. <laughs> that's on one of my, that's one of my bucket list items as well is to, to visit every single continent. It's pretty cool. And finally, if you were stranded on a deserted island, what one book, one album, and one movie would you take with you to keep yourself company? We'll go ahead Ooh. and spot you a copy of the religious text of your choice. So other than that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, so it was book, movie, and what else? Album. An album. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, so book... I would probably take Stranger in a Strange Land. Movie, oof, probably like Gladiator. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the North, general of the Felix Legions, loyal servant to the true emperor, Marcus Aurelius, father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife, and I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. And then album, uh, I'd probably take Dre 2001. Okay. Those are pretty solid answers. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, that brings us to the close of another episode of the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association's Patients Come First podcast. If you liked what you heard, please make sure to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and subscribe so you know when new episodes are released. And thanks again to our guest, UVA emergency room resident, Dr. Robbie Russell, for joining us today. Thank you guys for having me.